Welcome back. I'm Tedward and welcome to the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. But this is no ordinary 2020 Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. This one has been outfitted by AI Design in New York because this is one of the Team Champagne Ninja's daily drivers. Of course, there's always some fun hidden features in an AI Design car. So first, let's talk about what this car really is. First of all, it's huge. We've got an X3 for scale and it basically looks like a toy next to this behemoth. But we have a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8 with 381 horsepower. It'll tow about 8,100 pounds. The Heritage Edition ditches the console in the middle of the rear seat and it also ditches the third row. So it's a little bit lighter than the standard car. It still has incredible off-road capability with its transfer case. It even has a braking off-road feature, which allows the car to turn a little better. So it doesn't have four-wheel steering, but if you're taking a right, it can lock up or start applying brakes to that inside rear to skid the car around. So you don't want to do that on any surfaces that you care about. Up front, we can see that this front grill is not ordinary. This is bronze. So one of the big features of the Land Cruiser Heritage Edition is these bronze wheels. And to match that, AI Design went ahead and popped on this beautiful bronze style grill. Normally that's a little bit of a subdued chrome. The other thing the Heritage Edition foregoes is the running board. So you'll notice there's a ton of ground clearance down here, but because we still need an easy step into our vehicle, this one has a monster electrified running board that makes this a lot easier to mount and dismount out of this vehicle. So let's start it up and we'll start digging around for some other hidden features in this car. Very standard Toyota stuff until the Fleet 71 logo comes up. Always impressed with the way that AI design can get into these systems and make it their own. Very cool. So inside, everything looks pretty normal. We have an extra panel up top because this car has underglow. Yes, just like the LFA. It's actually the same system as the LFA. And one of the cool things about this underglow is there are lights inside. So you get to enjoy the underglow and know what's going on outside from the inside. That's always a good time. And then under here, this is where things get a lot more fun. So naturally, we've got to have some fun lights on this thing. So let's take a look at what's going on with this Land Cruiser from out here because a Team Champagne Ninja's car has to be subtly flashy or literally flashy when it comes to the lights. So we've got the strobes, they can blink in amber, white, and maybe some other colors that I shouldn't be showing you. There's a giant light bar up front. It's so incredible to see that at night because this is probably one of the brightest light bars I've ever encountered. But not only are these strobes going, the headlights are going and these fog lights are going. So AI design integrates stock parts of the vehicle, not just adding lights. We've got lights over here on the side and then in the rear. Again, integrating those uh, reverse lights is really cool. And then these monster strobes right here, those are incredibly bright and you can actually use that to illuminate the rear if you so choose. And you might say, why? Why are we doing this? Because it's fun. And if you don't understand fun, then I can't help you. But I think it's fun and it doesn't have to be on. So if you don't want them on, you don't have to deal with it. In the back, one of the better features of this Land Cruiser is the fact that it does forego that third row. So you get a ton of extra storage, which was utilized by some safes. And of course, a Team Champagne Ninja's car, especially if it's a wagon or an SUV, is not complete until it has a dog bed for our furry family members. They always ride in comfort. So you've got a cargo net there as well, just to make sure the dogs aren't jumping around while you're driving. And in the rear, Pretty cozy, comfortable stuff. You can recline these seats a little bit. And 
very standard Toyota. So despite being a 2020 vehicle, it still has the very old school looking displays, especially up front. When you look at that clock and the HVAC display in this thing, you are brought right back to your 95 Camry. It does have heated rear seats. And I think it's interesting because instead of having one button with two modes, it has a high, low, and an off. Three buttons for one heated seat. A little overkill, Toyota. And to make sure that you're not blinding yourself when you're driving at night and need a map light, AI Design has installed these red map lights for each passenger, except for the middle, I suppose. And I love that they use the red because that's an aviation thing. When you're flying at night, you're not supposed to look at white lights. So any, any pilot who's flying at night and using a flashlight is using a red flashlight to inspect a map or whatever they need around that cockpit. So that's great. So that is really fun and goes with their SR71 theme on all their vehicles. So let's jump in the Yoda and head up to Garage 42 where Craft Detailing is getting started on detailing my Honda Civic Type R because that's actually why I have this vehicle right now in my driveway in the first place because they were generous enough to loan it to me while my Civic is getting paint protected. The Heritage Edition does get some unique features like this bronze stitching on the steering wheel and on the leather seats as well as the doors and it cost $90,000. Notice how the speed of the window changes on the way up and the way down. <laughs> That's how you know you're in the luxury Toyota that isn't a Lexus. Anyway, $90,000 was a shocking price tag to me when this came out in 2020, but a lot's happened in the last couple of years, and suddenly $90,000 just seems like normal territory. It's absurd how expensive cars have become. So 90 grand for this suddenly doesn't seem as insane, especially because it's unbelievably reliable and you can pretty much run this forever. I mean, this is a 400,000 mile car if you're really talking about it. So inside, we do have some luxury features like heated and cooled seats. We're gonna put the seat heaters on and our heated steering wheel. Unfortunately, because it has this sort of wood grain on the top and bottom, that part is not heated. So that is very cold, but the leather parts are worn and then in toyota fashion nothing is updated we have sort of this hybrid of a touch screen and then everything else is just very old and that's not a bad thing because i like having a normal shifter i like having buttons and knobs for certain things i don't want to go through the touch screen for much else than accessing my phone and i do love these analog gauges i love getting in this car and sitting in front of a nice tachometer, a nice speedometer, and the information I need. I even have my oil temperature. Most cars only give you water temp at this point unless you really scroll through some deep menus, which I love. And then here we have the old school Toyota cruise control stock. So you could complain that this car is $90,000 and it's 2020 and it doesn't have a lot of the new features that you would have found on new platforms. But I have to say, I think that's actually something in its favor. I do appreciate the older stuff in this case. And it really does drive like an old school Land Cruiser, except it's so luxurious. It's nice. Although it's got a solid rear axle, it's a giant truck with couches in it. It does drive exceedingly well. We're going to get it out to the highway because I think that's where it can feel a little more frustrating. But around town at like normal speeds, I, I just find this to be a real joy. And even the brake pedal feel I think is great because on the GX, the Lexus GX 460, I found that that brake modulation always felt very strange. It feels much more natural in this vehicle, which I find to be odd because it's larger, it needs to do more work, but for some reason, the Land Cruiser feels a lot more normal. Now, we're above a Prius C right now. We are really tall in this in this Land Cruiser. You know, you you come up next to a tow truck and we're not that far below that guy. <laughs> it's actually pretty shocking how large this vehicle is. So if you're somebody who likes to sit up high in a captain's chair and have, you know, watch over the world, 
this is gonna do you just fine. I think we're probably close to Unimog height. The suspension, it's it's pretty luxurious, but I still feel everything in the road. And you never feel disconnected from it, which is important when you're in a big vehicle. When you start feeling disconnected from something, that's where it gets ahead of you, and that's where things get dangerous. So I never feel dangerous. This V8 has loads of torque. You don't have to put a whole lot of effort into it to get it moving. And I never feel like I'm in a rush. And I don't think anyone behind me thinks I need to be in a rush either. So if I'm kind of like taking my time accelerating away from a, a, a slow situation, I don't think anyone's mad at me that my Land Cruiser isn't red line to red line. Looking out over this hood, you can, ju you can really tell how wild the shape of the center of this hood is. I mean, there's like a good like four inch dip in the middle of that. It, it's pretty wild. In terms of fuel economy, sorry, I gotta blast the, the heat. It's kind of cold right now. I'm getting 15.4 miles per gallon. I, I reset that last night on the highway and then drove a little bit of some back roads. So I think in reality, you'd probably be more in that 12 to 14 range. But on the highway, I was able to eke out around 16, 17 MPG. You can get higher if you go real slow and if nothing nothing slows down and you're able to just keep momentum and you don't have too many hills. <laughs> but like, I don't think you're buying this to be a fuel saver. It's just, it's just always wild to me when you have a big fuel tank and the range is still like <clears throat> barely 300 miles or something. The Land Cruiser gets the eight speed automatic gearbox, which I think does a much better job of keeping it in the correct power band than the six speed. It also never really feels like it's gear hunting. Although when we get out to the highway, it does need to downshift on occasion. Good lesson in merging. Just use the merging lane for as long as you possibly can. <laughs> There's no reason to jump over just yet, especially when you've got tractor trailers. Okay, out on the highway, what's really fabulous about the Land Cruiser is that it's not underpowered. 381 horsepower, not outrageous. That's not a lot, especially if you were towing, and I could feel like maybe if you were towing, it would start to feel a little sluggish. However, because of the eight speed, it's able to maintain its place in the power band really steadily, really well. And that keeps you feeling like you've got torque. It keeps you feeling like you're you're never going to rev it out. Like I, I never really feel like I need to wind it out. Like that's wholly unnecessary. That's just for the just for the sound. Just to say, hey, we've got this V8, look what it does. Um, I can smell something horrible in front of me and I can see something smoky coming off of this truck. So I am wondering how this is gonna go down. I do not want a taste of that tire flying off of me, so I'm gonna keep moving. But if I was gonna be in any vehicle where retread flies off a truck and nails me. I think I want to be in this. I think this is the safety vehicle that I prefer to exist in. And if we had to pull over the side of the road, I've got all the nice safety lights, so I don't have to worry about anyone not seeing me, that's for sure. Oh, sorry, I made you guys stare at this bird residue for way too long. Now that's gone. Nice big wipers, which the whole screen. Would you off-road your Land Cruiser? I mean, yeah. But you've got to determine if 
you can afford to because if you scratch your $90,000 truck, that's not exactly pleasant. And wow, here we go. Hopefully it's out for delivery and not broken, but a Rivian on a flatbed. Just fits, just fits. It's a long van. So on the highway, this is where it's not bad, but you do have to pay a little more attention to the steering than you necessarily need to at low speeds. I find myself really having to pay attention. Like if I, I, I cannot get distracted by HVAC systems or like, ooh, let me choose a new song because I will be wandering. And I do feel a great sense of responsibility not to wander in a vehicle this size because I, I do not want to hit the, the, what even is that? A CHR? Sorry, Honda. I did not, I don't know that part of the line. <laughs> but I don't want to hit some, you know, poor dude in, in a Civic while I'm in my giant SUV. We're getting on the Mass Pike. This is one of, I think, a very simple on-ramps, an exchange, if you will, from 495 to the Mass Pike. People get very confused by this. It's very clear. West, east, you get over there, you get over here. Now, traffic coming on from here, though, they do have to cross all of this traffic if they need to go west. But typically what I do is I just stay right here. I let these folks come in, do your thing, off you go. But there's always somebody who decides that they want to change to west, like now, right here. You got to really keep your eye out for this nutty stuff. In the Land Cruiser, though, I do feel like I have a better view of everything, and I don't know that anyone's going to um, challenge me in it. This Honda has decided to make some, you know what, we're going for a, a right-hand pass. Use the merge lanes, guys. Run out the right lane for as long as you need to. Don't just jump over at 45 miles an hour. People are absolutely nuts. You're asking, asking to get rear-ended at like 80. No reason for this stuff. All right, we do have, like I told you in the parking lot, we've got our our Trick Toyota Cruise Control stock, which I love because this is very similar to the stock that's in the BMW, my old E92 M3. It's got radar, guided cruise control. I can adjust how close I want it to get to the car in front of me. Nothing, you know, you've never seen before, but still, it works very well. And I like having that in a vehicle like this because I don't always want to have to do the work. Captain's chairs, oh yes, these are delightful. I really like these seats, they, the heated seats and the heated steering wheel, man oh man do these work quick. And it's got the auto function for the heated seats so it doesn't just let it like burn me to death. A lot of times you forget you put your heated seat on until you're like, oh, oh my God, like, what, is, what is going on? And then you realize like, oh, I just left it on like the highest setting and I'm only now realizing it because I'm injuring myself. This will sort of taper it down to a one for you, which is great. I dig that. They are very tall though, because it's a truck. It's a truck, so you don't get to get nice and low in the, in the seat, which I do wish they would let you do a little bit, but you know, you've got a lot of headroom. So even if you're tall, I don't think you're gonna have a problem fitting in here. But if you are tall, you might appreciate if the seat went down just a little bit lower. So that's gonna do it for the Toyota Land Cruiser Heritage Edition, customized by AI Design for Team Champagne Ninjas. Now I'm pulling up to Garage 42 to collect my Civic Type R. But real quick, if you're thinking, man, 90 grand for a Land Cruiser, that's just too much, consider it this way. This car will last you 90 years. So it's only a thousand bucks a year to pay for really good, reliable transportation. There are a few things more reliable than a Toyota V8. There's the tides, the rotation of the earth, and this V8. I think you'll be in good shape. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you to Team Champagne Ninjas for tossing me the keys to this killer Toyota. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.